This week marks the commission on the status of women and on Monday night, feminist icons Gloria Steinem and Jane Fonda attended the Donor Direct Action event that highlighted how to get funds to grassroots activists working to push women's rights. Now, one of the other attendees at the event was perhaps an unlikely feminist figure, photographer Javier Gomez, who joins me now. So Javier, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you. So, you know, uh, I was there at the event on Tuesday night. I saw you as well. Uh, what led you to the event? Why women's rights? I mean, I, mean um, I come from actually very strong women, and I think women are the strength of every family. I, so I met actually Gloria and uh, Robin uh, two years ago at the Women Media Center, and they invited me, and I was really thrilled to just be part of it and learn more about the foundation. No? Oh, well, you talked about, you know, obviously, uh, women are really strong and are important to you. Which women in particular in your life have been a strength? Uh, my grandma, I will say, she was incredible. She founded a church and she helped and uh, also gave back. So they encouraged me since little to, that, to always give back. There's always someone that needs uh, help. And, um, and I've been doing this for you know, the past 10 years here in New York as well, working with several organizations. And now I'm going to Bangkok as well and do uh, work with this uh, organization that helps orphan kids. Um, and then you know, give them help with school and um, appliances, et cetera. I've been doing this, and as well, I told you about this uh, matric um, society that lived in Panama, in the islands, that I worked with, and I documented for the past, for two weeks, two yeah. years ago. That we've was incredible. Some, we've got some photographs, actually, yeah. I think that we can show all this matriarch uh, project that you do, because you are a you know, very well-known photographer here. We can see some of the They're images. Amazing. So talk to us about these women. Who are these women? They, they, these are the Guna Indians in Panama. And um, the, what is incredible about this is that for the past hundreds of years, they've still kept this matriarch world. So they inherit the land, they make the decisions and this function. So for me, it's part of, again, in New York, with people are trying to do this around the world, empower women. And we actually see it here, you know, hundreds of years of a culture that still keeps the family, the women as the head of um, their family and culture, you know? I mean, it's absolutely fascinating, and I think that these are the kind of images that people don't often see, particularly when you do see these kind of images, people think that the, the women must be very poor or, uh, you know, sort of coming from an area where women's rights aren't necessarily the forefront. What did you find most interesting in talking to these women, in photographing them, in learning a bit more about them? I think the respect that people have towards them and the admiration and also advice, they go to them, men always, they, it's all about the respect, it's all about treating them as your gods in a way because you come from a mother you come from a woman and the fact that that's just you honor them back you know and actually it was very impressive you can see their expression oh, they're strong they're, they create they empower them they try to keep their culture alive and again the men listen which is very interesting and again I think we should all do this it would, the world would be different you no know? Well, I mean, that's a good point. I mean, you know, you're from Panama City. Obviously, yes. you've gone all over the world. Um, how do you think that men should play a role in furthering women's rights? Because, you know, it sounds like these women almost have more of a hold and foothold in women's rights than some uh, women in countries that are supposedly developed uh, or far more westernized. I think it's more about listening a little bit, being partners in this, supporting, helping, encourage them to be, to help them uh, basically have their voice heard. So I think it's more about that listening a lot because they're very women are smart. Again, I think that's the key, no? Well, I mean, people might look at you and sort of think, "Hang on a second, you were people's sexiest artist alive." Uh, what, uh, you know, how does that figure in, obviously, to the the feminist kind of push you're trying to convey with your work? I mean, in a way, again, it's adds recognition to my work. So now people. Thanks to that, right, they will be able to see my work and what I do, which is more important, my abstract work, photography and also the charity work that I do. So, again, you need this to get a little bit of media and attention. But again, what matters to me is the giving back and, again, my fine art work, which is what I do, you know? Absolutely. Uh, well, I mean, how do you handle the attention, though? Because, I mean, when, when you were told that People magazine were going to give you that accolade, how did you respond? I didn't believe it at the beginning, to be honest. It was really strange because I don't see myself as being sexy, you know, when I wake up. But again, uh, when it came out, it was great. I got a lot of exposure and it was something that actually will help me to bring back my message, which is great. So again, um, how do I handle it? I mean, I feel very, a little embarrassed uh, at the end of the day. I mean, it's just, it will haunt me forever, I would say. It will be with me for the rest of my it life. It will haunt you forever? I mean, in a way, because people have an expectation now. They will expect you to be a certain way, right? And I think that I have much more than that. And what is inside for me is what really matters and uh, what you can uh, bring to society. So that's for me is what matters and what, what, what I want people to talk about. Yeah. Right? So this, again, helps me bring visibility to people. So now people all over the world now know who am I and they can follow 
what I do. Yeah, so. I mean, it's funny when you talk about challenging expectations as well, because as we say, you know, people might look at you as an unlikely oh, right. feminist. Uh, you know, where is your work going to take you to perhaps push that boundary even further? I mean, for example, now what I'm doing, I'm going to Bhutan in April, for example. I love Asian culture and I'm going to spend time in Bangkok. I'm spending three days with this foundation, it's called Monte Cristo, which help orphans kids, and we're going to be uh, b building a school for them. You know? And then I'm going to go to Bhutan to their biggest festival, which is uh, March 31st to April 4th, where, where all the monks, they dress and they dance and pray. It's their biggest festival. I'm, I'm very fond of um, Asian cultures, and I've uh, been trying to go for the past two years. So this is going to be amazing. And I'll bring back and uh, just take this exhibition all over the world, which will be Bhutan through my eyes. You know, talk to me a little bit as well about obviously you're going to the orphanage. Um, what role do people like you kind of putting that sort of attention on some of these poorer individuals, particularly when we're talking about women's rights, young girls are really at the centre of all of this. Uh, you know, how important do you think it is for people like you to be going and shining a spotlight through your photography and through your art on these kind of issues? It's super important. I guess for kids, they are they really look at us as inspiration, you know, they want to be like us at the end of the day. So if we can encourage kids, motivate them to develop their full potential, I think that's key. And there's a group of all young uh, persons like me, they're on our 30s, helping other kids, encourage them to develop their artistic side, motivate them to be great, to know their full potential. I think this is amazing and we can all do this. Uh, you know, absolutely, and I think that one of the things, and particularly the big takeaway obviously this week has been uh, nothing but a series of fantastic events around women and women's mm, rights. Correct. And having men be a partner, you know, what message would you want to give to any young men, young boys that are watching about how they can be involved? I mean, go online, go to the organizations as well. We can all do a little bit. Just going to your neighborhood, talking to your friends, getting together, building ideas, thinking of how can you do, go back to your foundations, your schools, and try to see who needs help. I mean, there's a lot of people in help that we can, and we can all do this. It, we can all do anything. It doesn't matter how, you don't need to be a, an artist, you don't need to be a celebrity, you don't need to be on the news. We can all do this. And uh, again, by donating books, for example, to school, by talking to a little girl on the street and try to like help them and, and give them a book, just that's as simple as that, giving a smile. And I think that um, little by little we can all do this and change the way things are.